In this video, we'll walk through step-by-step -step how to use Touch Designer to track people using a blob tracker and moving head DMX fixtures. In our example, we only want to track people when they are on the dance floor. Using a blob track chop, we align our Hakuyo to the UV on our dance floor by adjusting the center and size of the square that's reading the blobs on the blob render. This can be found in the op snippets under help in the menu. Now that we have our UV set to our dance floor, we need to find the world space positions of our Sharpies. So we created a line stop with two points that are 70 inches apart as represented by the length between each Sharpie on our square of truss. Then we copy each point and rotate them 90 degrees. Now we have to find our world space position of our truss relative to the dance floor. In this case, it was off centered by two inches on the X and 52.75 inches on the Z. Now we're ready to import all this information into our GLSL, which has each Sharpie represented by one pixel. We need to import our room dimensions. In this case, that's the size of our dance floor and our height of a target that we want to have. So we can correspond the UV position of our blob with the artificial height and present a target here. In this case, as we rotate around our UV, we see that the lights follow. How do we do that? Let's go to GLSL. We import all of our variables into our GLSL script to calculate world space. First, we assign a light ID to each fixture so it can run through the arrays in order. As we scroll down our GLSL, you'll find that we assign our world space for our dance floor and target. And then we find the distance from each Sharpie to the world space target, assign its numerator and denominator for the arc tangent function down here. Every side of the square gets flipped for this function because the lights are oriented to face the center of the dance floor. Moving on to Z, we use the Y value of our Sharpie as the denominator and the hypotenuse of the previous triangle as our numerator. From there, we convert it to degrees. We use a VEC2 of a 127 to set the middle range for our pan and tilt. And then we subtract or add the value for a the number of degrees per bit as described in our Sharpie manual. This will be different for every lighting fixture that you use. Then we round it to an integer and use a modulo of 255 so it will always go round in one circle. You might notice that I have a couple of commented sections out here. This is to account for situations where the Z position exceeds the world target Z. Occasionally, the lights will go off by 180 degrees if it suddenly calculates the tangent wrong and you can just accommodate that by subtracting 180 degrees. When you have this working in the real world, it's easy to see when there are things off just a little bit and adjusting lights two at a time is an easy fix. Lastly, we instance our position and our rotation on our geometry and with equal parts luck and fine tuning, you'll be off and running.